In this video, I'm gonna share how I created a simple client dashboard so that when clients log into their WordPress website, they're presented with a much better layout and something that's easier for them to use. It's actually really simple to set up. You have complete flexibility over how the design, look, and feel of this works. And if you do like I do and put this inside your starter site, you only have to set this up one time and you can clone it into every new install going forward. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in learning how to do, let's jump in and take a look. So we're gonna start this video off by already having the design in place. There's nothing really fancy here and it would have took a long time to just set up this design. So I'm just gonna kind of walk you through what we have here, but you'll have to set up your own layout. All right, so in here we have this first container which kind of works as the hero section to this dashboard and underneath it, the container with most of the content. Inside there is just a grid block with a bunch of containers. Most of these are just text, just heading blocks inside of here. Some of these we're just gonna turn into links. Then here in the video tutorials, I am using a tabs block to be able to put in different videos and have them be able to tab through. And in the support block, I do have an embedded fluent form. That's just gonna give them a simple support request form. And inside there, I have a hidden field that will show the URL of the website this was submitted from. That way I'll know which client sent me a support request if they ever fill that in. Lastly, in this empty space, I've just put in some calls to action for my agency, like if they wanted to schedule a meeting, leave me a review or visit my website. All right, so let's talk about how we're gonna do this. What we need to do is create some links for adding a new post or editing a post, all of these things across the top line here. So to do that, we're actually gonna need to have the back end of the website opened in a new tab because we're gonna be copying and pasting links. So the first one here is adding a new post. So to get the link for that, we just hover over post and hover over add new. If we right click, we can copy that link, go back into our page we're designing, highlight that add a new post text, click link and paste in the URL. Now we want to get rid of the entire domain from this URL. So here I'm just working on a Cloudways domain. We'll go ahead and delete that out so that it starts with the forward slash WP hyphen admin. This is gonna create a relative link, which means that we can reuse this dashboard on every single website, no matter what domain it's on, and it's gonna work the same. So we'll go ahead and click adding that link. And now we need to do the same thing for edit posts. So we'll go back in here, hover over post. On all posts, we'll right click and press copy link. We'll go back to our dashboard and highlight that text, paste the link in and get rid of the domain. Now I need to add those same kind of links for the pages and media. I'm just gonna go ahead and pause this video and add those links since it's gonna use the same process. All right, I've gotten those links added. And the last box I wanna talk about here on this top row is the analytics. So this is gonna depend on what kind of analytics software you're using. I'm using Fathom and I use the Fathom plugin, which gives me a page on the back end of the website that I can link to. I use the same process for that. So I can just go find that relative URL and paste it into this view analytics button. And it will just take them directly to that analytics page. Of course, if you're using a different kind of analytics, you can just link this to wherever they need to go to view their analytics dashboard. All right, next we'll move on to the video tutorials. Like I said, in here, I have this set up as a tabs block. On the left-hand side are the different tab buttons, and on the right-hand side are the content. So you can create some video tutorials. What I would recommend is creating some generic ones. So just generically how to create a new post or create a new page, the types of things that every client's gonna need to learn how to do, but we don't have to make an individual video for everybody's single website. So these would be really great to have them a little bit more evergreen so you don't have to spend so much time creating content. However, there are times where there's something very specific to a client's site that they need to know how to do. So I can always add a new tab to this block and add that specific video. For here, I'm just gonna go ahead and add in one of my YouTube videos. So we'll just add the YouTube block, paste in my URL and go ahead and hit embed. And that's gonna embed this YouTube video into this create post. So obviously you'll want to go ahead and finish out that process for any of the video tutorials you're gonna to add to the website. And you can always come back and add more later. Lastly, down here in the support section, you'll want to go ahead and create some kind of form as a support request form. Like I said, mine is pretty simple. We can go here and take a look at it. We'll go into Fluent Forms, and you can see I have this support request form already set up. The nice thing about this is it's always just gonna submit to my email address, so I don't have to set this up different for every single website. I can set it up one time and reuse it on every website going forward. 
So here is a hidden field, which is just gonna show up in the notification I get. That's gonna show the user's first name, the last name, their email. This way I'll know exactly which user this support request is coming from. Of course, we have the subject for them to be able to describe their issue or question. And then I took this last question from, I think it's Brainstorm Force that asked you, how are you feeling about this support request? And the options are awesome, confused, worried, or panicked. That just kind of helps you triage things and see how the client is feeling. So it's a pretty basic form that's set up in there. Like I said, it can be completely generic and be reused on every website. So I've only had to set it up one time and I can keep using it forever. Okay, now that all that is set up and everything is linked properly, we need to go ahead and save this page and then set up all the functionality to make sure users are redirected there and can access this dashboard. So it's important to note right here that I have named this page dashboard. So the slug of it is dashboard. That's gonna be important in the code that I'm gonna share with you. Uh, if you do wanna change this to a different URL, you'll have to make sure you update that slug inside the code as well. So let's go ahead and update this page. We'll go ahead and view it on the front end and we'll test a couple of these. Like if I click add new post, perfect. It's taking me to a new post. If I go to edit pages, it is taking me to the edit pages page. So we know that this is working. Obviously you wanna go through and test all those links. The next thing we need to do is start adding the code that's gonna be necessary to run all these functions. There's primarily three different functions I wanna add in here. So we'll talk about each one of them individually. So here inside the code snippets plugin, I'm gonna go ahead and add a new snippet. We'll call this dashboard functionality. And I'm gonna paste in all this code. You can get a copy of this code down in the video description below. And we're just gonna kind of walk through it here. So there's three primary functions that happen inside this code. The first one is to redirect any logged out users who try to visit that dashboard back to the login page. Essentially, I don't want just a site visitor to be able to see that dashboard page. I want to restrict it to only logged in users. So this first function here does exactly that. Here's where the slug for the dashboard page is in case you want to change what that page is later. The next functionality is to redirect any non-admin users to the dashboard page when they log in. So essentially what I do is set my clients up with an editor role as a WordPress user role. So when they log in, they're gonna get automatically redirected to the dashboard page we created instead of the back end of the website. However, as the admin of the website, I do want to get to the back end. So that's why I restrict this to only non-admin users. So we can see this entire script right here is gonna make sure that any non-admin users just get redirected to the dashboard page we created instead of the back end of the website. The last is the function to remove the admin bar for any non-admin users. So I really don't want my clients seeing the admin bar running across the top of the site because it just causes confusion for them. And I've had too many clients wonder why that's there and if it's a part of their website. So for me, it's just easier to add that and it works well inside this dashboard snippet. So if we go ahead and hit save, all of these snippets should be running and in place, but let's go ahead and test that out. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the URL here and we're gonna head over into a private window and paste it in. So now a visitor is visiting the website and they come across this dashboard URL. You can see it automatically redirected them to the login page, which is exactly what we want. We don't want any non-logged in user to find the dashboard. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put in the credentials for my client's user role that I've set up and then we'll see what happens when we log in. Okay, now that I got those credentials typed in here, when I hit log in, instead of taking us to the back end of the website, it should take us to the dashboard we created and the admin bar across the top of the website should be gone. So we'll go ahead and hit log in. And we can see just like that, the dashboard is showing up here and the admin bar page is gone from the website. Now, of course, clients can still get to the back end of the website when they click edit post, for example, they're gonna see the admin of WordPress, but because their user role has been limited to an editor instead of an admin, they have a limited amount of things they can do here. So obviously they can't go in and start messing with plugins or things like that. You could also go to the trouble of creating a custom user role, which I actually do to be able to restrict things a little bit further, but mine is based off the editor role and gives the same general functionality. I realize everybody's use case is different. Some people don't even like their clients ever logging into WordPress, while others might let them have the full admin experience. I sit somewhere kind of in between. I realize that the WordPress back end isn't really great to look at, and it could be confusing for them to come in there the first time and just try to find where they can edit a page. I think the dashboard I created gives a little bit better impression and makes it easy for them to find the handful of things they might actually want to do on the website. 
I'd be curious to know if this is something you'd be interested in adding into your workflow. Like I said, I put this inside of my starter site. So other than doing this video, I really only had to set this up one time, put it inside my starter site, and it's always cloned into every new install I create. If you got something from this video, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up. And if you want to make sure to catch the next one, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and we'll see you then.